Hi, hi everyone. I'm Celeste and welcome to my YouTube channel. My channel is all about cosplay and fashion and DIY and occasionally some family vlogs. I hope you guys are here for my pregnant chicha cosplay. I made this cosplay when I was pregnant with my son and now my son is out of my belly. So this is just a recap on how I created my chicha cosplay. If you are new to my channel, hi and welcome. I've been cosplaying since 2005, won numerous awards back in my time of living in the USA. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe to never miss out on any of my future content that I create. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in a comment down below. Let's go ahead and get into this making of Chicha from Emperor's New Groove. This is my plan for my Emperor's New Groove cosplay. I need to make a skirt that has a very long train. I need to make a tunic with big sleeves and a high collar. And then that's it. Yay! Well, not true. I need to make the earrings and then a headband, which is really simple. So let's go ahead and start fabric hunting for the things I need. Oh, look at that! I already have an elastic that fits my waistband. That's an empire waistband. That'll be perfect for my skirt. So yay! Here's that. Don't forget my awesome fabrics from Best Estafa. Now, I do plan on using all of this orange fabric into this costume because I don't ever know when I'll use this color again. Yay! Here is the mustard yellow. So, we're going to be using this yellow. I'm hoping... Yeah, look at that. This is such a ray of sunshine. So, I think this will look great. Now, I just need a green fabric for the headband. I have some of this left over. I think this is the right color for the cuffs of the sleeve. I'm not sure, but yeah, we're gonna figure that one out. Look at that, hiya! This is a great color. This is from my Kushina Remnant. Actually, I could just probably go make a headband right now and call it a day. So uh, give me a second, I'll show you how to do that. We'll start with the headband. So for the headband piece, I'm probably going to just fold it over once and make sure it wraps around my head. And because this is a jersey fabric, it's pretty stretchy. So I just need to cut a nice long rectangle, not mess up my actual hair. And then we are going to cut it out. First, I made sure that my rectangle was symmetrical and even. So I made sure to measure it and then I cut it out. I bring it to my serger and I'm serging the long side, then I flip it inside out. And now I bring it to my sewing machine, connecting it, making a tube. So now I'm going to take my orange cotton and I just need to make sure that I can make a rectangle that goes around my waist with my baby bump. Oh, that's perfect. So I will just cut the entire thing. Your baby bump might be different from mine. And I just needed to go all the way down to kind of my mid or ankle, one of the two, which will be 30 inches with some seam allowance, 32. Uh, looking at this picture, it has to be down to the ankles. Okay, so I need to go back and rework that measurement. Measure from on top of your baby bump, basically an empire waistline, to your ankles. <laughs> Whoops. I went ahead and cut out a rectangle and hemmed it. Then this way I can make the base of the skirt. I cut off the excess material so I can use it for the collar of the shirt. Okie dokie, so we have the mustard fabric out. I'm not done with the skirt yet because I need to know how much will I need for the top and the sleeves. And the top, I'm going to be using this part of the bodice because it fits really well. It does have to have a little bit of modifications. And like I said before, this fabric does not stretch and this requires stretchy fabric. So what we did is we marked out the min like the length that we need for it to stretch on the non-stretchy fabric with some pencil. And so I did that. I changed the neckline so it's higher and I did that for this part on the back and I extended it because Chicha kind of has like a shirt kind of thing. So um, there's that. Now what I have to do is cut it out. In order to extend things, you just basically, where are you? 
you take your measuring tape and you measure yourself. So if I want it to be a little bit longer, because that's, oh, that's boob. So this is where the seam line is. If I want it to be like three inches longer, I want three and a half. Or in centimeters, that would be 10 or nine, nine centimeters. So then I would just extend that. Because I don't know how much my bump is going to change it, I did a little bit longer. And the back is pretty long, so I want to be able to taper it to how I want it after I belt it. So we're going to have a longer shirt, and then we're going to make, well, we'll see. Like, I have to have enough yellow for the skirt part as well and the sleeves, which I think the sleeves are, are going to be really easy. I'm just going to do like two rectangles and call it a day. Off camera, I went ahead and cut out my shirt and then I sewed it at the shoulder seams, thus giving me the new neckline. I traced the neckline onto the orange fabric and I extended that neckline to create the collar. The collar is going to have these cog-like pieces so I measured out three inches for the length and then I cut out two inches worth of cogs. Then I repeated this to have a lining. You definitely want this piece to have the lining. Honestly, it's so much easier. All right, so let me show you what we have here. I copied the neckline of the shirt and then I measured out about three inches because I need some seam allowance for the top and the bottom. Hi, Peach. And so I drew on this to create the pattern of the neckline. It's kind of got this like box thing. Now it looks like it's going to be too blocky. No, because I have to sew it for the seam allowance. And then when you flip it inside out, it shrinks a lot. And then this is actually going to be sewn onto the neckline top. So it'll hide all that stuff. Um, if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Don't be afraid to draw on your fabrics on the wrong side because this is going to get flipped inside out. Hi. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is take this to the sewing machine and give it like a really small seam allowance. And then, yeah. So I went ahead and sewed that seam allowance. And then at every corner of those little boxes, I made sure to clip the corners off. So when I flip it inside out, it'll lay flat with a good ironing. Make sure to iron this down so it will have a very easy time when you're sewing it and it lays just the way you want it. Continue making the shirt, making sure you serge or finish all the raw edges. Wow, this is looking so cool. So I made sure to iron it down and what I'm going to do first is pin it, which I already did. I pinned it all the way around, making sure that I lined up the middle part of the front shirt with the middle part of the collar. Now this is on the wrong sides together, meaning the right sides are together. Then when I flip it, it'll look really nice. And then I'm gonna stay stitch it. So I'm going to sew around the perimeter of the collar and it's okay that there's like a gap here in the back. No one's gonna look at the back. No one looks at her back and they never show it. So I think it's fine. Yeah. And that way, if I need to make it smaller, I can without compromising the collar. Woo! It's so nice. So what I'm doing now, before I flip over all of it, you can see this is now the right side because now the blue surging is not there. The blue surging is here, so you can see. And then what I want to do is make sure that it stays down. So I'm going to understitch, AKA sew the stitch line seam to the fabric that's going to be hidden with the bias. This way I don't have like an actual seam on the top and then it's all underneath. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a quick, right pedal, um, quick stitch across the seam. And try not to stretch it, otherwise it'll make your collar very not good. <laughs> but that's why you do stay sti stitching. And then you can take those out if you feel like it. Stay stitching is important. We'll talk about that later if you're interested. So leave a comment down below. Now, some people, if you're not this crafty, what you could do is you can just glue this down instead. There's nothing wrong with gluing your cosplay. Now that it's done, you can kind of see there's this red line here. It's really nice. And then 
it's just going to help lay this flat. And all I had to do is repress it again. Now, if I really want to, I could just sew this down at the top, but I'm going to leave it and see how it goes. And make sure to cut off your excess stringy tails like that. Yes. Now it's time to finish the rest of it. I want to show you what this looks like on. I didn't cut the shirt bottom hem just yet because it's, I really don't need to do it just yet. But I think I will do that next before the sleeves. And the sleeves, I'm just going to make like some really long trapezoidal kind of thing and then cut out the fabric for that. But this is how clean the top looks. I love how that looks. It looks so good. I didn't iron it again yet, but I will do that. Now I just need to cut the hem. And do that while i was wearing my shirt i made sure to mark the hemline that i wanted and then i pinned it down so that way both sides are symmetrical and i cut it out now i just need to finish the raw edges which i surged and then i did a single fold hem so i'm using the pattern for the sleeve and i marked out how much more i'm going to have to cut out because the sleeve is kind of bell shaped i'm not sure if i can get that without adding an additional fabric but it is longer and i don't think We'll see what happens. I measured out the length of how far I needed it to be and it's 19 inches for myself, including seam allowance. Now when I cut it, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra lip and then go from there. What are you doing? Why are you here? Why are you messing up my video? Now with my scissors, I'm cutting out my sleeves. And don't forget, Chicha sleeves actually has another color. So grab that fabric, trace the bottom hem line of the first color and extend it by like four inches. Now that you have the pattern for the bottom part of the sleeve, cut it out and then attach it to the main part of the sleeve. Make sure to serge all your raw edges, hem that new bottom hem line, sew it together and then you're ready to add it to your bodice top okay so the sleeves are completely assembled it's pretty simple to explain but i cut the pattern out and i extended the pattern just a little bit oh there's a string here let me cut that off and then i added this little strip at the bottom of the hem made sure to serge it because garbadine actually frays a lot and then I stitched it down so that way it lays flat and this part doesn't like pucker up. I hemmed this fabric. Now this fabric doesn't really fray, but I just thought it would be nice to have kind of like a woven texture at the bottom. Now I pinned it to the top. So the bodice has the sleeves attached, just went around. And now I'm just going to sew along it first and then I'm going to take it to the serger so this way it has the nice serging and it doesn't fray and that'll be the end of the top. Ta-da! Nice little big bell sleeve and two-toned. Very nice, you know, two-toned. Now with the rest of the mustard fabric, I have just enough to make my train. We can see here that Chicha's dress skirt part here that I'm doing actually covers a little bit of her baby bump. And in a few frames later, you can see that it's legitimately a train. So I want to use as much as I can of this mustard yellow fabric, basically the rest of it, to make the train and it goes down. It does show a little bit of the baby bump here and open. So we're not going to completely close it on the waistband. Instead of it being a curve, I'm going to cut the hem so it's nice and straight on both sides. And then I'm just going to do a fold over hem on top of all of it except the top, which will be added to the elastic band. So let's get there. So with this skirt, I already hemmed all of it and it looks very clean. You can see it now. And now I just wrapped the yellow all the way around the skirt that's orange. And luckily this one was a little bit bigger and so it has the crossover. So I don't have to worry about that. Now what I need to do is make a waistband. And since I have a little bit of this orange fabric left over i'm going to use this as my waistband and originally i was just going to sew it to the elastic but i thought that would be like really 
not pretty. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is get my elastic, make sure I can make an encasing like this, and it has enough space. I'm going to mark it. Hmm. I guess I'm not going to mark it, but I'm going to visually remember about this much and I'm going to cut it. <laughs> and sometimes you can actually, okay, please don't fall. With this fabric, I believe I can go like this, a nice cut. And now that I've made this cut, I can just rip it. Rip it good. Ta-da! Now all I have to do is serge this together, sew this to the skirt, and that's a waistband, and shove in the elastic. Chisha has a belt, so I used that same fabric I used for the sleeves, and I created a very long rectangle tube, which I turned inside out and top stitched it down. And then, you know, I just kind of wrap it around my body. It's too hot in my sewing room, so I am going to be painting my Chicha earrings. I got these cut out of my laser cutter, just made an oval shape, and now I'm going to first be painting it brown with a paintbrush. Just kidding, it's a makeup brush that's so broken. And then I'm going to be going over it with some gold, lightly. After I finished the painting, I hot glued them to some stud earrings and finished my cosplay. Look how perfect we look. Seriously. Come here, Peachy. Come on. Come here. Look in the mirror. Look how nice this looks. I'm so proud of how it turned out. In another video, you can check out how I made Chaka's costume. It's just a little dog costume with the leftover scraps, but I am so happy with how this turned out. And the wig that I am using is actually a lace front. And luckily, <laughs> I have a headband to help keep it in place, and then I just pinned it upwards to create this little bun thing. Oh, hi, hi, you're moving. Baby with a lady. Wait, that's not right. Whoa. Look at what you did to your skirt, young lady. You tore it apart. Why did you do that? <laughs> it is actually not a breathable costume. This costume is very warm. I'm already sweating. And it is also really hot. Why did you do that? Why did you, why did you eat your skirt? Stop it. Let me know in a comment down below what you think of this Disney cosplay. It's kind of crazy. Look how big my bump is. I think this costume is so nice to wear, but the problem is with the train, it's kind of not con friendly. And yeah, you could probably do without that. I do like the fact that I made this into separates because it is super easy to get into as opposed to making it into a robe. Um, anything else that I need to add? No. Other than make sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss out on any future cosplay content. If you like cosplays and sewing videos like this, then yeah, absolutely subscribe. Remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye.